What's happening everyone? I want to share my story with you guys. I was kind of reluctant to do so because there's a lot of, you know, YouTube videos out there about, you know, seeing Jesus, meeting Jesus. And uh, I was kind of, you know, reluctant to do so. But God put it on my heart to do it and I want to be obedient. So I want to give you guys my story. And uh, I'm going to go back a little bit in time to when I was younger. You know, we grew up basically in a very dysfunctional family. My mom did the best she could, you know, and uh, from what she knew, we didn't have, we didn't really have a father figure in our lives. You know, he left us when we were, you know, young uh, due to a lot of complicated reasons, I guess. So, but basically, you know, he wasn't a very nice man. You know, my dad wasn't, you know, and just to clarify, I did see him before he passed and I prayed with him. It was awesome. You know, uh, I never had that father son relationship. But, you know, we took away any right the devil had to unforgiveness and strife between us before he did pass. And I thank God for that. And so I do honor him and I honor my mom. Just to be clear about that, I believe in doing so. But when you're young and, you know, dumb growing up, you don't think about those things. So when I was younger, I was, a, you know, a skateboarder slash rebel little punk kid, you know, and... Uh, you know, I had this tremendous fear about hearing from God. I don't know why. I mean, I've, I've prayed to God a few times even before all this happened. But when I was about 13 years old, roughly, uh, you know, Satan will use whatever he can to amplify whatever's wrong in your life or whatever's missing. That's what he does. And that's what he did in my life. You know, ever since I was a child, I just heard nothing about, oh, you know, you're rejected, you're abandoned, nobody cares about you, nobody loves you, you know, blah, 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 and all this junk, right? And that's what you tend to believe because it's just flooding your mind. You accept it. It builds strongholds. And next thing you know, Satan has a place now, a foothold in your life. And it's hard to shake that unless you get in the Word of God and get with Jesus and just really, you know, break that off through the power of the blood and the name of Jesus. But anyways, so that's what he did to me. And so... All that dysfunctional type family deal growing up and hearing all these lies and these whispers from the enemy and whatnot, it really created a rebel heart in me, a very cold, calloused heart, especially towards God. Because, you know, if God is a father and he's the one that made us and I was put in the family that I did have with my dad, you know, what kind of, I, I, I don't want nothing to do with that. So basically, I rebelled against God. I blasphemed him. I cursed him. I, I, I wanted nothing to do with God. And, uh, you know, and that's very dangerous ground, let me tell you. But I thought I was, you know, doing what was the natural defensive thing to do to guard my heart, right? Well, basically, uh, the wild thing is, is that, uh, you know, I got into... You know, with my rebel heart, I got into some demonic worship. I started writing demonic poems. I started talking to the devil. I started praying to the devil. I started cutting myself. All the tendencies that led up, lead up to severe Satanism. And I leaned towards that way. I mean, I blasphemed God. You know, I, 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 I gave my life to the devil. I mean, I, I basically, what do you call, you know, you know, when you hand your life over, you basically, you know, give your soul to that. And so that's what I did. And so I became under a lot of demonic bondage after I did that because I yielded myself to that. So next thing I know, you know, a little bit later on, nobody knew this really much about me. I mean, I think maybe a few folks did, but, you know, my few younger friends did, but not really anybody. I didn't really, it's not something you share when you cut yourself and you take razor blades and, you know, whatever, and pray to the devil and write demonic poems, whatever. I lost my demonic poem book one time, and I was so afraid of anybody finding it and reading it because the first thing they want to do is commit you into a sane asylum or get you medical help, whatever, whatnot, which we couldn't even afford that at the time. So that wasn't really a concern. Uh, but, uh, and I was like, you know what? I said, Lord, destroy that book. Later on, I asked the Lord to destroy that book. I hope nobody found it. I hope it's trash, burned up, whatever, whatnot, because I had to repent of it. But anyways, so, you know, I was into some, I was going into, you know, some heavy demonic worship. Well, I was riding with my cousin one time and my aunt said to me when we were in the back seat, and I was young, I was about 13 at this time, you know, the whole Satanism thing came up like the year before that. And so... She said to me, are you ready for the Lord's return? 
I didn't know what that meant. I knew nothing about the rapture, about the Lord's return or anything like that. All I know, it burned in my heart and I couldn't escape it. There was a fear there that I couldn't escape. And next thing I know, after that happened, and she did not realize the impact that she had by saying that to me. I believe the Holy Spirit really, really, you know, magnified this. And there was such a fear there. I was afraid to hear from God. I don't know. I'm just giving you my stories as, you know, as, as I remember it clearly and, you know, in the timeline as best I can. So I had this tremendous fear of hearing from God. And so I, uh, you know, went home and I couldn't shake this, this fear of hearing from God. I don't know what it was, you know. I don't know. Nobody really knew what was going on. I didn't talk to anybody about this. And so, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, I know I'm not ready because I cuss him, I blaspheme and whatnot, you know. I mean, I'm a skater kid up with a rebel heart, you know, a punk kid, whatever, whatnot, you know, cursing God because of the life I've been given and the cards I've been dealt and all that, whatever, whatnot, you know, just this natural tendency to rebel. And so, uh, anyways, I was listening to uh, I think uh, it was Rigor Mortis or Slayer. It might have been one of those. It was one of those guys. Slayer or Rigor Mortis. I was a big Metallica fan. Ozzy Osbourne, all that, you know. And I was listening to Slayer that night. I believe it was late Slayer. And uh, I was laying on my stomach. And this was when I was about 13, almost 14 years old, I guess. Some My time frame is not exact, but somewhere near there. And we had a street light in the back of our townhouse. And I remember a lot of light would come in to our to my townhouse bedroom upstairs in the back where the street light was at. I had no curtains on the window. And I just had a mattress on the floor and a radio there basically and some, you know, clothes, whatever, on the floor. And uh, so next thing I knew, I was awake for this. I was not sleeping. I was not dreaming. I was awake. And the Lord wanted me to know that. And so I'm laying on, the, I'm laying on my stomach. And next thing I know, my arms raise me up off the bed like this. I'm laying on my stomach. I'm trying to get to sleep, not really sleep, but trying to get to sleep. It was like one something in the morning. And my arms raised me up. I have no control over what happened. I wasn't in control of my body at this time. My arms raised me up automatically. I'm looking at the wall like this, laying, you know, with my lower half of my body down on the mattress. And my arms are holding my stomach up and I'm looking at the wall like this. And I remember so vividly and clearly that the room was like, I was like in space. There was no light. It was just complete darkness all around me. Like I was in like space, you know, kind of like... You know, uh, you know, just like an asteroid, you know. <laughs> so, and I saw this huge white light in front of me about, I'd say probably if I had it estimated about 30 yards or so in front of me. And I saw this bright white light. I remember three golden steps, a bronze pole on each side. And the steps were probably, I don't know, 12 to 15 feet you know, wide. And I saw this man standing on top of the steps, on top of the, you know, top step. And he was wearing all white, and he had his arms out to me just like this. And I could see his feet, I could see his hair, but I couldn't see his face. His face was too bright. It was, it was light. It wasn't like sunlight. It wasn't like a light bulb. It was light. And I've heard, I've heard a lot of people explain that before, and I know what you're talking about. It's wild. And I see him standing there just like this. And I'm looking at it in such like awe. I know who it is. My spirit instantly picked up on that. I knew who it was. It was the Lord, Jesus Christ. And he's holding his arms out to me like this. And it just, so, I mean, so much took place in that short amount of time that I experienced that. Uh, it's almost like I knew his heart for me. He knew everything about me. And I knew he knew how I felt towards him. And all the things I've said and done, you know, up to that time, which I'm still young, you know, and all that, so... And uh, he has his arms out to me like this. And he's, and I know he wants me to come to him. He wants to love me. He wants to hold me. And so I saw that. And then it went away. And when I was released from that open vision or trance, whatever you want to call that, I, my arms were still up off the, off the mattress on the floor. And I was still looking at the wall. And I, and I was like, what was that? What just happened? I know what just happened, but I can't explain it. And I was beside myself. I mean, you know, what do you do when you see something like that? So I'm like now trying to lay down. I think I cut my radio off. I cut the radio off and I laid down and just kind of like just, you know, in a uh, almost like a fetal position, I guess you can say. 
and uh, just laying there. And next thing you know, here comes what a what felt like a hundred gallons of warm honey poured over me from my head to my feet while I'm laying down on the mattress and it just covers me it was the one of the most tremendous awesome feelings I've ever experienced you know from the supernatural to the natural and I just felt like it was a hundred gallons of warm honey that's what it felt like just soft and warm like liquidy but there was nothing there you know it was just poured over me and I felt it from my head to my feet and I started shaking real bad and so you know that happened in one night in a matter of minutes and the next I couldn't I couldn't sleep that good I don't know what happened it felt great it was awesome and next thing you know a turn of events started taking place uh, I was introduced to my friend uh, who, who who's like a brother to me now and uh, and I was introduced to him and his family but what's wild is that we were enemies at first in middle school we picked on each other and uh, I believe it was what was in him and what was in me didn't like each other because he came from a Christian background. I came from a, uh, you know, very dysfunctional, you know, background. <laughs> and so I believe what was in me didn't like what was in him and attacked him, whatever. And I picked on him or not. It was demonic. You know, I'll say that. And I wasn't demon possessed. And I, you know, not like the man from the Gadarenes, you know, that had the legion of you know, demons in him and whatnot. I wasn't like that by all means. I was still in my right mind. And, um, but basically, I picked on him. We picked on each other. We ended up in getting in trouble together and whatnot. Next thing I know, I, I found out that he likes what I like, even as young kids. And so I became friends with him. You know, how cool is that? God turned that situation around from us being enemies to becoming great friends and, and having a brotherhood with each other. And then I was introduced to his family. And uh, his family you know, was a complete godsend. And uh, I was greatly blessed by his family. You know, I mean, they just... You know, you know, it was awesome becoming a part of that family. And I am to this day. How awesome is that, right? God is good. And so she started sharing me with God's love. I started witnessing God's love in the flesh through this mother, you know, through my through my friend's mother. And, uh, you know, she just started lo loving me and just taking care of me, whatever. And we, I could stay there whenever I want. It was just, it was a very peaceful residence. And it was a residence, a home, given over to the Lord. You know, that scripture says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Well, there is a, that, that's not only a declaration, but that's a promise. And when you do that, you know, there's such a peace in a home. You can feel it. You can tell the difference. I could. And so I became part of the family. I started living there. And I eventually gave my heart to Jesus. I uh, prayed and asked Jesus into my heart. And then uh, afterwards, I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And there was this awesome feeling in my tummy. I'll never forget it. It was just like extreme butterflies for a moment in my tummy and uh, in my belly, you know, where rivers of living water flow out of us, you know, out of Christians. And so, uh, uh, you know, I got to experience that. And that was awesome, you know. And I went into a, a whole procedure, I guess you can say, about me repenting and renouncing the devil in every form. I mean, anything I could think of, I just started renouncing it, repenting it, cutting it off, you know, by the name of Jesus and by the blood of Jesus. And I repented. And of course, you know, that was when I was young. And, you know, I had a lot to learn from since then. And um, so, you know, I repented, cut the devil off. I said, get out of here, loser. I'm choosing the right side this time. God showed me his love. He poured his love on me. He accepted me. He was not my enemy. You know, the devil really, really, really likes to tell you what you don't have or who, who you're not. He likes to try to manipulate you and deceive you just like he did with Adam and Eve. That's all he has. He uses deception to try to get a foothold in your life and then he uses your power against you that God gave you originally, just like he did with Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were more like God before they sinned, after they sinned. That, that tells you something because of the fact that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what the devil does. And so quit listening to him and start listening to the voice of your shepherd, okay? Start listening to the voice of the shepherd and follow him, okay? So anyways, and then not too long ago, I had a dream. And this was pretty recent, like within the last year or two years. I had a dream. And I'm not good at time frames. I should write this stuff down. But 
Anyways, I had a dream and it was awesome because in this dream I saw this table and I, I can I conclude what kind of interpretation it was, but it was one of those vivid dreams that you know it was a spiritual dream. This was a dream this time. And I dreamt that I was standing in front of this beautiful table and there was this beautiful Bible wrapped in like almost like a king's clothing of some sort, you know, it was like wrapped and really, really nice with very expensive fabric. I mean it looked really nice. And there, and I knew what to do. I was supposed to nail a hammer into the Bible, and it didn't make any sense to me. And there was this hammer and nail there. It was the same type that they used on Jesus, from what I can tell, that the Romans used on Jesus. And I was instructed, like, in my spirit, you know, kind of like you hear it in your, you hear it in your head, whatever, in your heart, whatever. And I was instructed to nail the nail into the Bible. I didn't want to do it. But of course, you know, with the Lord, you don't want to be disobedient. So, you know, that's where childlike faith really comes into play because you just say, yes, Lord. And so I took the nail and I took this mallet hammer, whatever, and I nailed it in there and I hit it as hard as I can. And I believe I was crying because I really didn't want to do that, you know, to the word of God, to the Bible, the you know, the Holy Bible. And next thing you know, when I did that, this rich, really thick, rich red blood poured out of it and it came towards me. And I saw it, and I was in all of that. And I was like, what did I do? What happened? And I put the hammer and the nail down on the table beside it. And next thing you know, it was like a splice clip here. Next thing I know, I was down on my face, on my knees, before Jesus. I didn't get to see him. I know he was to my left the whole time. I know he was there. I didn't get to look at him. I didn't get to see him. But I know he was on my left side. And the next thing I know, after I nailed the nail in there and I saw the blood come out, I was on my knees and on my face crying before the Lord. And I was I was just, you know, crying over his feet. I was, you know, laying at his feet there, you know, bowed down. And he comes over and he wraps his arms around me. It was so precious to me. It was so sweet. I mean, he's so sweet. And uh, he wraps his arms around me. And I'm just sobbing and crying like a little baby. You know, and and I'm saying, it's been so long, Jesus, since I've seen you. It's been too long. It's been so long since I've seen you, Lord. And I'll never forget that because I realize how much he means to me. You know, you, he kind of lets you know along the way sometimes, you know, and it's really awesome. So that was one of the, you know, like the second, you know, spiritual thing that's happened to me besides, you know, being in some meetings and shaking whatnot. It was awesome, you know, fall, you know. Feeling the power of God and shaking under the power of God, it's awesome, you know. I'm not one of those guys that, you know, like the, I don't like the, you know, faking and shaking everywhere I go. I don't do that, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm like to the point where like, okay, Lord, if you want me to go down, you're going to have to put me down. You know, I'm that kind of guy, you know. I'm very skeptical about things. I don't trust people easily, whatnot. And even Jesus didn't either. So, you know, I, I go by the Word of God. I stick to the Word of God. That's my default for truth. That's where I go to to learn about Jesus is the Word of God. And so... My message to you is, and if you're still with me, and I hope you are, and I hope you're enjoying this, because I want to say the same thing to you, that Jesus' arms are wide open to you. They're open wide to you. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are, whether you're ignorant of what you've done, or whether you know what you're doing, He loves you. God can't love you anymore, and He can't love you any less. And I like what one of my favorite preachers says, is that, you know, you can't get God to love you more, you can't get Him to love you less. Whether you read the Bible or not or go to church or not, he doesn't love you more or less for that. But what happens is you grow to love him more when you read the Bible. You grow to love him more when you fellowship and go to church and hang out with other Christians, you know, and just walk out of the room from the devil, you know, just walk out of the room of the devil and just go towards, you know, the Lord, run to him, you know. And that's my message to you today that he stands ready to accept you, to forgive you and love you. And he breaks every chain. I mean, 2,000 demons was no match. In fact, the most demon, demonic possessed man was in the Gadarenes in the Bible, and he came running. The demons in the man came running and fell at Jesus' feet. And it says that worshipped him, saying, What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come to torment us before our time? That wasn't a man talking. That was the demons talking. So there is no, there is no one that can even compare to the power of our risen Lord. So I pray that this message has blessed you for whoever it's for, you know. Uh, you know, I just want you to know how much God loves you. Jesus died for you. I mean, how much more can you get than that to know that someone loves you, that Jesus, God's Son, died for you? 
So my message to you is believe the gospel, read the Bible, you know, repent and run to Jesus. Repent means just change your mind for the better, you know. Run away from your sins, you know, because, again, let me remind you, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And in the Bible, anytime he shows up, he's always looking to take from and destroy whatever God has done. You know, like I said, Adam and Eve were more like God in the beginning before they sinned than after they sinned. When Satan came and said, hath God really said? You know, he is a deceiver and he can only, you know, his only power is to deceive and bring in deception. And if he can do that, then guess what? You can yield to him. Okay. And he's a loser. So you don't want that now. So anyways, that's my story. That's my testimony. Um, and let me say this. Christianity, being a Christian, is not like a light switch where you accept Jesus Christ, you know, you get baptized in water, you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you know, and then you, that stops right there. No, it's a pursuit. It's an endless pursuit. I mean, this whole walk, every day on earth, is a is a chance to build your relationship with God, to run after Him, to know Him more. God's not the champion of hide-and-seek like, you know, Bigfoot is whatnot. He doesn't do that. But he wants to see where our hearts are at. He wants us to come after him because what pleases God, I think, a lot is that he gave you something that he can't override or he can't go against, which is your free will. And I think it's I think it pleases God to know in when we use our free will to return the love that he gave us back to him and go after him and love him, you know, because the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. And he proved that to me. And I and I know he'll prove it to you, too. So I pray that the father would reveal the reality of his love, his presence over each and everyone watching this video right now. I pray that the Lord would show up like he did with me to anyone who was in my shoes or just to anyone who needs to be encouraged. I pray that Jesus, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the Son of God, would reveal himself to you and show you his love, show you his mercy and grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, I'm sorry it ran longer than what than what I expected. I was trying to keep it short. Of course, you know, I'm a bit of a talker. I don't really like to spotlight a whole lot. So, in any case, uh, whoever this message may be for, I hope you're blessed by it. I know, uh, I know our time is short here. I believe, you know, I know a lot of people have been saying for years, Jesus is coming back, Jesus is coming back. But there's a, I believe there's an urgency in my spirit towards us, you know, about the rapture, Jesus coming back, and, and you know, I I couldn't escape it when my aunt told me that many years ago. And uh, and even talking with other Christians, you know, uh, who are who are following Jesus, they feel the same thing. So I want all of you guys to be ready. I know that's not the case. I want it to be the case. You know, I, I want everybody to, you know, be taken when he does come back. So be prepared. Be ready. Don't be a foolish virgin with no oil. Don't be like that. Read the Bible. Run to God. Get to know his love for you. It'll cause you to love him more. OK, he loves you so much. He's a good, good father. Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Spirit stands ready and just waiting for your invitation. So be blessed. God bless you. And I think I covered everything. So feel free to comment, uh, ask questions, whatever. Like I said, you know, there's a lot more in-depth videos out there, but I just felt God put this on my heart to share it. And so, uh, but the number one thing is, is, you know, love. Faith, hope, and love abides. But the greatest of these is love. To know his love for you and to return his love to him and love others. I mean, that's the only thing you're going to take with you when you go. You know, when you die, when your spirit and your soul leave your body, the only thing you can take with you is the love you give and the love you receive. And he may ask you, and I think he will, did you learn to love? All right, so. All right, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and I hope you believe on him. I want to see you in heaven, whether he returns for us or we go meet him first, however the case may be. So, anyways, all right, God bless you all. Take care.